today we're going to be going over how to combine two different peptides into the same syringe for one injection. So this is an acquired skill. Uh, you have to be a little bit savvy with the syringe, but once you learn how to do it, it should be pretty easy. So first you want to make sure that obviously the peptides have been reconstituted. Uh, so that would be step number one. And then I'm going to show you how to actually uh, make the injection. And typically this would be used for peptides that work within the same pathway and they can be combined into the same syringe. So a prime example of that would be uh, healing and regenerative peptides, which would be BPC-157 and TB-500. So those can, can uh, be combined into the same syringe for uh, one injection. So that would just basically reduce the amount of times you have to do injections. Uh, they're also available um, mixed into the same vial, but if you happen to acquire them separately uh, in indiv individual vials, then you can use this technique to actually get them uh, into one injection. And later we'll talk about some of the other peptides that can be combined, and that way um, you know, you're utilizing them in the most efficient way possible. So when you're starting off with a brand new vial of a peptide, obviously you have to reconstitute it. So I'm not gonna show that step today because I've already shown that in other videos. But once you do the reconstitution part and the peptide is ready to be used for injection, the first thing you wanna do is actually inject a full syringe of air into the peptide vial. Balance out the negative pressure that's inside the vial so that when you withdraw the solution for injection, it comes into the syringe much easier than if you didn't inject the air first. That's the first step you wanna do that in each of the two vials because we're obviously showing two different peptides today in separate vials and then we're gonna combine them into the same syringe. Listen, whether you're new in the peptide space or have been using them for a while, there's an awful lot to know and it can be pretty intimidating just to get started. Trust me, I know how this feels which is exactly why I've got the solution for you. I've spent countless hours researching the most popular peptides, reading through cutting edge studies, and cataloging my own personal experiences. And now I've summarized all of this information into two separate user-friendly documents. The first one is what I like to call the ultimate peptide guide, which outlines everything you need to know, including what peptides are, how to use them properly, best practices for storage and administration of peptides, and use cases for the most popular peptides out there. The second one is what I call the essential reference chart, which is a super efficient tool showing the purpose, recommended dosage, timing, the cycle length, and even reconstitution amounts for more than 30 peptides and bioregulators. Both of these documents are now available at a discounted rate for only the next 30 days. And if you're looking for a more customized approach, I offer flexible options for private coaching, which actually includes both of the documents I just mentioned. Everything can be found at the links in the description below or in this channel's profile. So once you've injected a full syringe of air into the vial, you're going to remove the syringe, do it in the second vial, and then from there, you can make the first withdrawal of the peptide solution, which I'm going to show you here, okay? So as you can see, we're going to pull to 10 units, and sometimes you get a little bit of an air bubble, so you can just pull a little bit past and then push the air bubble back in. And once we do that, we're going to flip it back over and then carefully remove the vial from the syringe, and we'll place that to the side. Okay, now that we have the first peptide in the syringe, I'm just taking a small amount as an example. You obviously want to know the exact dosage that you're going to be taking uh, prior to doing this so that when you combine them, you have the correct dosage. So if you're doing 10 units of BPC-157 and 10 units of TB-500, then you'll have a total of 20 units in the syringe after you've done this combination, okay? I'm just using that as an example. I'm not saying that that's the dosage that you should be using. And again, I'm just saying units, so that's not really a dosage, it's just an example. All right, so now we're going to take the syringe that we've already used for the first peptide, and we're going to insert it 
into the second peptide vial. And what you wanna do is make sure you're holding here so that the syringe doesn't get pulled into the vial with the second peptide, all right? And we'll turn it upside down. The negative pressure that we inserted with the air uh, earlier is going to allow us to pull the peptide into the syringe with the second one, okay? So it's just slowly dripping in. And once we get to our desired dosage, in this example, we're doing 20 units. So we already had 10 in the first one and we've done that. And then I'm going to carefully withdraw that from the syringe. Okay, so we've got our full 20 units there. Uh, another quick little tip, sometimes if you get a large air bubble, you can just give it a gentle flick there and the air bubble will rise to the top of the syringe and then you can just gent very gently push on the plunger like so. Okay, so I'm literally just giving it a little bit of a tap, not too much, and the air bubble will rise to the top and then you can just basically flick it off the syringe. So when you're combining peptides, it's very important that you are combining the correct kinds of peptides. Like I mentioned earlier, you wanna make sure that the peptides you're using together work within the same pathway. So the example that we used before was BPC-157 and TB-500. They're both in the healing regenerative pathway. Another good combo uh, that combines well together is BPC-157 with GHK copper peptide. Okay, and you could actually combine the three of those together because uh, they all work synergistically in the body. But uh, GHK copper peptide tends to burn a little bit by itself. So when you combine it with BPC, that reduces some of that uh, injection site burning. Another good example would be uh, two peptides that work in the cognitive function category, which would be CMAX and Solanc. So those can be combined together within the same syringe. And a third example would be uh, something like uh, ipamorelin and CJC-1295. So those are both uh, growth hormone peptides. Um, so they're working in the same pathway as well, and they can safely be combined. I'm not going to get into really any more details on peptide combinations because there's a lot of different ones. Uh, if you're curious about that or you're not really sure what's appropriate for you, you're more than welcome to sign up for coaching and you can get an individualized plan that will uh, basically give you guidelines and safe dosages as well for uh, the appropriate amount of peptide combinations that you're looking to, to utilize. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can grab the Essential Peptide Guide at the link in our bio, as well as the peptides reference chart. So these are all great tools for beginners as well as experienced peptide users. Like I said, reach out, join the email list, and stay in touch and we'll get uh, a lot more information out to you going forward. Take care and thanks for watching.